Did you know you should never use a crafting table like this? Or how to find diamonds using the F3 screen? Here are 73 Minecraft things only veterans know. The biggest mistake people make is to mine randomly for the resources they need. You want diamonds? Go to a river. It turns out that if a river has a clay patch, that is a sign there are diamonds below. Start at the center of the clay patch, go two blocks in the Z direction, and mine straight down. You'll be swimming in diamonds! But never mine straight down. If you're not careful, you can break the block below you and fall straight into some lava. So, always mine down with two blocks and have a water bucket so you can clutch. We all know the trident is the most useless weapon in the entire game, but they actually have a secret use only pro players know. If you charge up a riptide trident underwater with a sword in your hand, you'll turn into a supercharged torpedo that can kill almost any sea creature. And if you've got an elytra, try taking to the skies while it's raining and using the same trick to literally become a missile that destroys any mobs above ground too. Gas tears can be super annoying to collect. I don't think I've ever forced a gas that wasn't over a giant lava pit. That's why the best players bring a fishing rod to the nether that they can use to pull mobs back over dry land to take out with a sword. This doesn't just work for gas either. You can stop these pesky blazers from getting away and it even lets you get sick kills on piglins. That'll teach him for stealing my gold. Enchanting can be really annoying when the bomb slot just shows up with a breaking or an enchant you just don't want. But you can fix it with a wooden shovel. Turns out it's true. If you enchant any useless tool at level 1, it'll re-roll the entire higher set of enchants that you make the perfect set of gear. So many people make this simple mistake. Stop making low ceilings! Even when mining, a two-block tall staircase tunnel is a recipe for bonked heads whenever you go up or down. Also, doesn't the high ceiling look so much nicer in your house? Who doesn't love farming? But a big mistake people make is to stick a single block of water and surround it in veg. That water can only feed so many plants. So instead, set the water and vegetables in rows, and your plants will actually grow faster. Minecraft play Players all over the world use this incredibly slow method of getting around. People love using bubble columns to zip up to some high tower, but getting down, they use another water shaft. Why waste the time when you can make a shaft, leave it empty, and just have a block of snow or water at the bottom to break your fall? Yeah. One of the most common items you can get in ruined portal chests are these seemingly useless fortune gold pickaxes. This thing will break after like three iron ore. What's the point? Well, if you're in the smartest 0.5%, you'll know that pickaxes don't break when destroyed crops, so you can use the fortune enchant to get extra resources from your farm for free! How many times have you tried leaving an animal pen just for all of the mobs to follow you out and escape through the gate? Well, I have a fix! You can use an L-shaped layout like this, a wall block or a carpet to create exits that only the player can use. The best part is that it means I don't have to remember how to craft those stupid fence gates! Using shears to collect leaves? Big mistake! You could instead use a hoe, as more modern updates of the game have improved the hoe. And with enchantments like fortune, you can get way more items, way faster. Path blocks, they look great in a lot of spaces, but they're slightly shorter than the average block. If there's any empty space next to a path block, even if another block is on top trying to hide it, the gap will still be there. Look at it, you can see right through that. Piston door lag! It's a big mistake that happens all the time. Pistons pushing blocks out of the way looks all fancy, but takes precious time when you're trying to get through. Put the pressure plate a few blocks back so you don't smash your face on an automatic door or secret entrance. A major a mistake when making an enchantment table is forgetting to bring the right items. Make sure any lapis or books are nearby in chests so you don't have to remember at all. Speaking of storage, what on earth is this? Nothing is sorted, it's all just thrown together any which way. Set aside different chests to hold different things. Want tools? Make a tool chest so you know where all your tools are. In fact, stop using chests entirely. They're old and dumb and stupid. Well, alright, they look okay. But barrels carry the same amount, cost less to make, and can actually be opened even when another block is on top of it. Spy glasses aren't that useful on their own, but if you use Optifine, you can use that as well to get a super zoom! Hitting F1 will remove that annoying overlay too. Ever wanted to learn how to become invincible in Minecraft without armor? If you eat a god apple and then a regular golden apple straight after, you'll keep some of the absorption even after the effect wears off. This means you can repeat this as much as you want to gain literally hundreds of hearts. It doesn't come cheap, but come on, only the top 0.1% smartest people know this. You're rich anyway! You know how you need two water buckets to create an infinite water source? Well, you know nothing! <laughs> Sorry, that was me. But seriously, you only need one now as long as you have either kelp or a cauldron. Using this setup, you can place kelp here to magically create two new sources, and you can use water bottles to fill a cauldron and conjure another bucket full. Setting up a farm for food can be super difficult early game, but there's a hidden cheat code only 1% of people know. If you're brave enough to challenge the nether and make a run to a soul sand valley, you can farm the fossils for tons of bone meal you can bring back with you for a head start on all your farming needs.
Silverfish don't seem that dangerous at first, but it's not uncommon to find yourself in a stronghold severely outnumbered in just a few seconds. But silverfish only spawn when a player deals damage to them, meaning you can just use lava or a flint and steel to totally avoid spawning them. Don't panic! Really, don't panic when a creeper is coming, or TNT is ready to explode. Just put some blocks down in front of you and you'll take way less damage. It's so much fun finding buried treasure, but where is it? I'm at the X. Everyone makes a mistake of just guessing the X exactly is pointing, but you might be off by a few blocks. So to be absolutely sure, look at the coordinates in the chunk selection. The treasure will always spawn at 9-9 for that chunk. It should be straight down. The nether is where mistakes can be deadly. It's very easy to catch fire, and water disappears instantly. Or does it? The big mistake people make is not bringing a cauldron and buckets of water. Even in the nether, water in a cauldron will not disappear. So when you catch fire, put yourself out with this cool trick. Um, Evokers are a super powerful mob despite never hitting you themselves, but you can actually predict what spell they're gonna cast next. If he sends out white particles, it means he's spawning vexes, and you can run and get some hits in. But if they're gray, it means he's summoning fangs, and you should probably run! And before you head through the portal, make sure you bring some TNT, as you can use it to farm ender pearls really easily. Simply build a pillar above a small pit like this, and stare at as many endermen as possible. Once you've trapped enough, place the TNT down and light it for near infinite pearls. You can even hold a looting sword while the TNT explodes to get even more. But what if you're like me, you struggle to even find the stronghold? Speedrunners have a solution. Once you're fairly sure you're nearby, try throwing just a single eye and placing a line of blocks until you think you've run past it. Then head to the side of a line and throw another eye. Follow the path until you hit the blocks from before, mine down, and you'll be right where the stronghold is. You know those huge annoying trees you sometimes get from oak saplings? If you place a single block seven blocks above the sapling, they'll never grow again. You can also use this setup to only get the big ones if you're a psychopath. A big mistake is to not keep up with what's changed in game updates. In version 1.18, they even changed the way diamonds spawn. It used to be that diamonds mostly showed up between depths 5 to 12, but now you'll find them showing up more and more all the way down to bedrock. A mistake that has taken millions of lives is digging under sand and having it fall on your head. The best way to avoid dying is to put a torch under any falling blocks. Any sand or gravel that falls on the torch breaks instantly. You should hide at night to protect yourself from monsters, right? Well, not if you're on the rare mushrooms biome. It would be a mistake to waste those nighttime hours because hostile mobs just don't spawn on mushroom biomes, unless there's a monster spawner. One mistake is not getting a cat. It turns out creepers hate cats and will run if there are too many around your home. Plus, look how cute they are. Aww. Stop using powered rails. They're expensive and unnecessary. If you really want that speed boost, saddle up a pig and put it in the rail cart. No, I'm serious. Riding the pig in the minecart while pushing forward lets you move almost as fast on normal rails as you would on powered ones. Using a furnace for your food is a big mistake. Use a campfire. It doesn't need any fuel. And even if the fire gets put out, you can use a silk touch shovel to recover it, and the fire will be lit again. It's so easy to get lost in Minecraft. It even happens to me sometimes. But if you make a banner, name it using the anvil, then use the map on it, it'll show up on your map. Plain as day. Now I just have to find my anvil to get started. Hmm, where did I put that? Speedrunners even have ways to make nether portals instantly without diamonds. Find a lava pool like this, then place a block here with water next to it. Break that and place blocks exactly like this on the side of the pool. Place water right here and place lava in the formation of a portal around the side. Remove the water and you've got an instant nether portal with just a single bucket. There's also a way to do it in an underwater ravine, but I'll leave that one to the pros. It's not because I can't do it, okay? But the skeletons are one of the most annoying mobs to farm in Minecraft. They don't even spawn half the time. But if you're in single player, try lowering your render distance and simulation distance to five chunks. This will force all mobs to spawn where you can see them, letting you find farm skills way easier. Once you're ready to fight the weather, whatever you do, don't spawn it above ground. Trust me. I learned the hard way. Instead, dig a 40 block long tunnel underground and spawn it in a chamber at the end. If you stay at a safe distance, you'll be able to take it down super easily without getting hit once. Well, good play as well. Cakes aren't really the best food source, but they do work as a great decoration. But did you know they're even better now with the addition of candles? Now you can place a candle on on top of the cake to add just a little bit extra color to the room. For redstoners, slimes are super valuable, but they can be so hard to find. Swamps are usually the best place to look for them, but sometimes you'll go just to be met with nothing. Well, it turns out that's because slime spawns in swamps are actually based on the moon. So if the swamp is dry, try waiting a few nights until it's full, and the swamp will be covered in the things. Wanna loot a desert temple? Do not forget your water bucket. It's really useful if you accidentally step on that central pressure plate. Dig through it to expose the TNT, then pour that water on top 
top. The first TNT will explode, but won't damage anything or ignite the other TNT. This trident with Riptide is great for the high jump, but a big mistake people make is using it in deep water. You actually do much higher jumps in a one block deep puddle. The sniper doll achievement can be really hard to get normally, but this is Minecraft. Get creative! Trap a skeleton in a hole, put a block above its head, shoot the block with arrows, put a sticky piston there, connect a switch 50 blocks away, pull the switch, the block moves, a skeleton dies, and you get your shiny new achievement. It can be really hard to find exactly where the buried treasure is once you're nearby. The map isn't really clear, but if you think you know the general area, hit F3 and make these two numbers say 9 by moving to the right block. Dig down and voila! Seven fish and an emerald. Great. The best way to move villagers isn't to use minecarts or boats. It's actually just to use a bell. Villagers will all flock to a bed whenever a bell is rung. So if you remove all nearby beds and place just one wherever you want them to head to, they'll go straight there as soon as the bell is rung. Clever, isn't it? What's even smarter is this invisible elevator that uses wind. Crazy, right? Huh. Uh, you didn't see that. Okay, fine. It's not a wind elevator, but it's still really cool. If you place a bubble stream in a corner behind two honey blocks and then maps in item frames on the honey blocks, you'll create a hidden elevator that really does look like magic. Getting caught in a raid can be a nightmare, but don't make the mistake of fighting off the enemies in open combat. Just dig down! In a three block hole, you can hit the Ravager, but it can't hit back. Wanna sneak first? Use Swift Sneak correctly. If you sprint, jump, then sneak as you land, your Swift Sneak movement will actually be going one block faster every second than you would sneaking normally. If you find yourself in a cold biome and want to make a farm, you can! But don't make the mistake of using open blocks of water. Use waterlogged leaves instead, because these don't freeze like water does. Ladders take a lot of wood to make, and when you're exploring, you might make the mistake of wasting wood for no reason. Instead, grab a friend, get some shields, and start punching each other. The knockback can launch you six blocks into the air with some real speed. Sometimes you just need a ton of filler blocks for a project. So what's the fastest block to farm in bulk? Well, you can obviously build gigantic wood, cobblestone, or moss farms. But if you just want something simple, try trapping a snowman and using stone shovels to instantly obtain hundreds of snow blocks you can use for whatever your heart desires. If you've ever built an enderman farm, you know it can be pretty tiring to constantly click on enderman to get XP. But did you know that splash water bottles actually hurt enderman? That means if you get them low with full damage, you can just chuck one every so often to gain tons of XP and infinite satisfaction. I could literally do this for hours. Speaking of splash potions, have you ever noticed that you don't get quite as much effect time as the potion says? Well, that's probably because you're throwing them at the ground or a wall. If you throw them straight up so they land on your head, you'll get the full advertised time. Eating berries is a mistake! The bushes are decoration at best, and they're actually one of the worst food types in the game, filling you less than even raw beef. Your chests need protecting. Don't make the mistake of letting creepers destroy them. To be totally sure they're safe, waterlog the chest. The water will protect it, and the creeper would have exploded for nothing. It's always a mistake to come unprepared, especially in the ancient city. Bring slow fall potions because you can jump through the city from any height, and if you stay in a straight line, you won't trigger the sensors. In creative mode, people always make the mistake of not using all 10 of their hotbars. That's right, 10. In creative mode, you can save your hotbar to a number. Save your hotbar using the C key and the number you want it saved to. Press X and that same number to access that hot bar in an instant. Weeping vines can be a lifesaver, so don't make the mistake of forgetting to bring some to the nether. You can't use water there, so to get down from a high place, put a weeping vine up, use bone meal, and it will grow as a perfect ladder down to safety. Needing to know where one biome begins and another ends can be so important. Don't make it hard to see the line between them. Turn off the biome blend option. The hard line between biomes might look weird, but it's so useful. It's worth it. When trapping villagers or animals, the biggest mistake is not using honey. Put it under their feet so they can't jump out of their pen. You'll never have trouble with escaped villagers again. Get that efficiency enchantment on your shovel, but don't make the mistake of going past efficiency 4. It actually can't get faster, so you're wasting your time and experience. And since the addition of Deep Slate and all the new caves, strip mining has pretty much become a thing of the past. But it can still be pretty hard to find caves. Thankfully, there's a few ways to make it way easier. Firstly, this number on the F3 screen shows you exactly how many air blocks are ahead of you, meaning the higher this number is, the more likely it is there's a cave in that direction. And to make it easier to find exactly where it is, try turning on subtitles. Not only will it make it easier to see which sounds are being played, but it'll even give you arrows pointing in the direction they're coming from. Raiding in cities can get pretty dangerous very quickly if you find yourself floating high above the ground, and that's why the best players know to always carry chorus fruit. If you find yourself in this perilous position, eating one will instantly teleport you down to the ground safely. Just make sure you still got the levitation effect. It doesn't go well otherwise. Sometimes a regular fuse of a TNT just isn't long enough to get you to safety. So if that's the case, try crouching and setting the block on fire instead. Instead of instantly lighting, it'll burn for a bit before lighting. Trust me, this isn't a troll. Trust me. I'll never do anything like that. Speaking of enchantments,
enchantment. It's a mistake not to get the mending enchantment first. If you get other enchantments first and leave mending too late, you could break that item accidentally or get that too expensive message, stopping you from enchanting it at all. Nether gold can be really useful in getting gold for the piglins, but it's a mistake to mine it normally because all you get are nuggets. Use a silk touch pickaxe and smelt the ore in a furnace, and you'll get a whole ingot instead, which you can trade to the piglins directly. Burning a lot of coal in your furnace? Don't just put a big stack of coal in the furnace. Combine nine coal into a block and use that in the furnace. It actually burns longer than nine coal on their own. Don't get lost in your new mine. The best way to keep track of where you've been, where you're going, and what you're going to do next is to put down signs. Seems simple, but so many people make the mistake of exploring without leaving a trail of signs telling you how to get home. It can also make a great to-do list. Anyway, did you know trains actually exist in Minecraft? And I'm not talking about minecarts. Well, technically they're called caravans, but if you attach a lead to just one llama, all nearby llamas will quickly run into formation and start following you around. With enough patience, you can breed llamas to have 15 slots of storage space, meaning you can carry around 150 shulkers worth of items with just a single lead. And when you're done with these llamas, if you attach the least one to a fence and then, uh, dispatch it, it'll lead the lead on the fence, giving you an extra bit of detail to decorate with. No matter how many are nearby or how close they're watching you, if you one-shot a zombified piglin using something like a Smite 5 sword, other piglins won't get mad at you. Just make sure you don't have sweeping edge on too. Walls don't have much of a use other than, you know, being walls. And to be fair, nobody even really uses them for that either. Either way, they actually have a use in redstone. With a setup like this, you can place a single wall right here to instantly send a signal hundreds of blocks down. I know that doesn't sound that insane, but I know like 1% of you guys are freaking out right now. Mobs in Minecraft have gotten pretty good at pathfinding, but there's still one thing they can't seem to understand, and that's minecart rails. For whatever reason, if you surround yourself in tracks, zombies just don't know what to do and will freeze on the spot. The same goes for spiders, vindicators, iron golems, and even cri- Wait, wait, wait! Ah, subscribe!